Hello everyone and welcome back to another car review. Now if you've been keeping up with my videos, you know we have reviewed every single one of the cars my family owns and there are lots of them, but we have not done this one yet. This is our 2009 Chevy Cobalt LT. Here we have our owner who just happens to be the local mechanic. Yes, I own another car. Yes, so today we'll be talking you through this. So this is our 09 Cobalt, like I said, and this car we have owned since brand new, just like our Envoy. My mom used to have a 94 Saturn, I don't remember what, SC2, and that car lasted till almost 300,000 miles and then it blew up and we had to get a new car. So instead of staying with Saturn, they went with a Chevy here. This is our Cobalt. So I want to talk us through the trim of Cobalt here. What are some of the goodies we have? So there's three trim levels when it comes to 2009 Cobalt. You get the Cobalt LS, Cobalt LT or the Cobalt SS. So they went with the mid trim package here. This isn't the low buck, you know, roll up window one, but it's not the super fast SS one. Mm. So we have the LT trim package. Yes, and this is the two door version opposed to the four door version. And we also happen to have the best styling feature this spoiler back here, which creates massive amounts of downforce. It's very sporty. <laughs> uh, it's cool. So this comes <laughs> with. The 16 inch wheels, as opposed yes, five to spoke. the 15 inches, which would have come with hubcaps. So you have mm. the five spoke silver wheels. Um, interesting to note that most Cobalts have four lug hubs. The 2010s all have five lug hubs. So that's how you interesting. differentiate the 2010s from almost every other model year. The 2010 was the last Cobalt model year. So this is the second to last. Second to last, yeah. Model year, and then they discontinued. At the front of the car, I got new headlights for it because the old one's fogged over, but you'll also notice a lack of fog lamps. Yeah, no fog the lights here. Every car in the Grundle <laughs> does not have fog lamps, so I'm going to wear that badge with honor and uh, yeah, use high beams. <laughs> but something cool they did with the Cobalt, you'll note that you just have these vents here instead of, you know, on like, say the Ford Focus, they don't have fog lights, instead they put a cheap plastic circle where the light would be. Here they gave you actually a new bumper for it, so you don't have that ugly thing. But while we're up here, we might as well talk powertrain. Let's see the engine. By the we... way, before we talk powertrain, mm -hmm. you'll note the insane amount of road ride. <laughs> here. It is a fair few. That this particular Cobalt has 216,000 miles on it and counting all original. We have mm. not replaced the engine, the transmission or the axles. Um, the hub bearings are original. I mean, like this, like it needs nothing and it just keeps going and you can't kill it. Nice. So some premium options you're getting here. You'll notice we have a hydraulic strut. There's no just stick you have to put up, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so as you take a look under the hood, you'll notice that this car was obviously owned by a high schooler. <laughs> that high schooler would be me. And when I was in high school, I wanted to make my car faster. So what did I do? I painted the engine cover red. Adds five horsepower. And yes, it has <laughs> faded and gotten dusty over the years. <laughs> but after I exited high school and moved on to college and learned things about adding power, I added this cold air intake from k and uh, I spent way too much money on it, and mm. it did not add nearly as much power as I thought it would. But it looks cool. It makes the car sound cool. Yeah. And I don't have to pay for replacement air filters because this is a lifetime air filter. You can clean it, wash it, and then put it right back on the car and you're good to go. It filters all your air. Mm. So this is a 2.2 liter naturally aspirated engine, yep. right? A four cylinder. What's, what power are we talking about? About 155 horsepower and 160 pound feet of torque. That's pretty good. It's more than I make in the dart. Yep, and it's a four speed automatic with overdrive. Ah, so overdrive. about 70 miles an hour, you're pumping out about 2,700 RPM. Cool. The, uh, the only major service we've ever had to the engine was the timing chain stretched or skipped a tooth. Uh, that repair mm. has made about 120,000 miles. So it's gone almost 100,000 miles since then and has not had a problem since. Good on that mechanic. <laughs> so. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed this GM badge on the side of the Cobalt. There's a story to that badge. Yes, this is a chiclet car. 
What I mean by that is every car that GM made in the mid to late 2000s got mm -hmm. this GM badge. <laughs> so that everyone knew it was a part of GM. Then the economic recession hit, late 2000s, around 2010, and GM stopped putting GM badges on all their cars. So that's how you know that this is a pre-recession vehicle because it has the chiclet badge. Yeah, I mean, Corvettes had those. Everything from GM had those GMs, at the time. Buicks, you name it. And then also, <laughs> another cool exterior feature we have is a sunroof. You could not get that on the LS model. That's something that you got on the LT. Cool. Sunroof. Premium. Premium. And mm -hmm. it also has power mirrors. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. All right, well, let's look at the trunk in this bad boy. <laughs> I mean, it kind of pops. <laughs> So, as you come closer, you may notice something aftermarket in here, in that there is a gigantic subwoofer here. <laughs> yes, that is a Kicker 10-inch subwoofer, and uh, we can get more into the audio system when we get inside the yeah, car. Yeah, moving inside. But uh, it's a pretty uh, powerful unit, about 400 amps, I think, something like that. Mm. I don't know the statistics on it. I had it installed when I was in high school. It's plenty. But yeah, it's got a decent amount of trunk space. It is pretty good. I fit all kinds of stuff back here. I, I could fit in there. A tool set. I have my He's a mechanic. tire patch kit and a couple of other things, parts, in case something goes wrong, because this car is notorious for blowing bulbs. Every month I use I lose either a headlight, a tail light, a turn bulb, something goes. Once a month. Mm. Well, if you close the trunk there, your middle brake light has a few bulbs in it. Yes. And it seems like one is always out. <laughs> two reverse lights and then three bulbs in here and then two bulbs on the outside. So you have two, four, six, seven bulbs on the rear of the car if mm -hmm. one goes bad at least once a month. Gotcha. One feature that I do want to mention that is not very common on most cars is you actually fold down the rear seats from here. Oh, really? There's a latch here underneath, and you'll just pull on that. And as soon as you pull on that, it'll release a lever inside the car for you to fold the rear seats. Oh, well, that's really cool, actually. Neat. It's uh, kind of inconvenient. Oh, never mind. Yes. Why is that? Because I have to pull on the latch and then walk around oh, and yes. down my seat, whereas most vehicles have it on the seat. You just pull the latch and pull the seat down. Uh huh. This doesn't happen. So it's not like SUVs where you push a button and the seats go down. Yeah. No. You just unlatch them and then go you back to the other. Bar. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's move on to the interior then. This being the two-door Cobalt happens to have the largest doors in the history of cars. These things are absolutely gigantic. If you look at the distance between the car and it fully open, <laughs> it, yeah, it's d difficult in tight parking spaces. Well, one thing that's rather interesting is when the door is completely open, if uh -huh. you're inside, you <laughs> cannot reach the door handle. Mm. You have to exit the vehicle <laughs> to grab it. <laughs> it's just gone. It is a full car length into the road next year. Mm. Well, the reason they're so big is because we do have back seats here, even though it's the two-door. All you do is fold the seat back, and um, I've ridden in, in the back of here a fair few times. And as you can see, it's not that bad to get into. And you can fit two people in here pretty comfortably. I have leg room, and I even have a little window back here. <laughs> Uh, huh. It's about the only feature you get in the rear seat is two cup holders. Cup holders are nice though. Wiggle your way through the seat belt and it's really not that bad, I have to say. No, for most two-door cars and the large door helps with this, mm -hmm. it's fairly easy for a human to just kind of back their way in. It's difficult for aliens. So, good stories. Um, us three Grundlins have all ridden in the back seat of this car. Yeah, at one point or another. Mm -hmm. So you may notice the red seat covers here which are pretty cool that was an added feature <laughs> this is an automatic shocking we own an automatic car you can see of course 2009 we have real dials and buttons here for the climate control which is outstanding of course and i will add that this car has fantastic air conditioning it's yes. it's really good it uh -oh. robs about uh, 40 horsepower and it becomes incredibly slow but you are going slow in comfort. it's worth it <laughs> but you may also notice the aftermarket Kenwood screen in here. So talk us through this, Alan, yes, what we have. so we can actually fire up this screen and get oh, sure. some of the cool features that it has. So uh, we'll fire up the Kenwood radio here. And uh, a couple of cool features is, you might be able to see, not be able to see it with the light, but I can actually get these buttons to glow red 
match the outside of the car. That's pretty this neat. This is your volume control here. I could have hooked up a rear backup camera, didn't decide to do that. I can uh, listen to the radio, play my iPod, or hook up my phone for Bluetooth. And it has a CD player, which I will display. To this is that. just fantastic. I love that. Boom. Oh, yes. So the Cobalt originally came with, you know, it was, it's still, you had like your volume knob and a yeah. very basic screen in there. Uh, but yeah, replace it with this as that came with the brand new stereo Allen is here with uh, the subwoofer and you replaced all the speakers all as well, All the speakers right? are new, high quality wires run throughout the car and it, it bumps. It's, it's got a good sound to it. <laughs> It's probably the best stereo we have out of our fleet, of course. But yeah, otherwise, as you can see, we have the sunroof. This is, it's not one touch, no, but it's still, you can open it all the way up. You know, it's not just a flip up one, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It has a vent mode, and if you close it all the way, it makes a crazy sound. <sighs> Perfect. Yes. I'll just pop that. Yep. It also has uh, dual, dual mirrors. Front vanity mirrors. It's outstanding. So you can look at yourself. And from 2009, it had the premium option of OnStar on the mirror here. Of course. Uh, which is, if you don't know, basically the worst call phone thing ever you could have. It's really bad. Yeah, it was like <laughs> a horrible version of Siri back in the day where you would tell it to call somebody from your contacts list and it would fail miserably. It, 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 it never recognized what you were saying. Yeah, but you could use it for emergencies in case the car like rolled over or something. You could just hit the on start button. <laughs> Someone would be there to assist you. Also, a weird thing that I haven't really seen in any other cars is the center console, which is normal, but this is hinged because the handbrake is under here. So when you lift the handbrake up, it lifts up the center console, which is a strange feature I haven't really seen anywhere else. Um, but yeah, that is that. I also that. have a slot for coins and miscellaneous things. Excellent. Put there. <laughs> You'll also note inside the center console, I have a compartment for pencils. Pencil holder. Well, a few more other items I added was this Bluetooth microphone so that I oh, could yes. talk to people when I was on the phone. I mm -hmm. also added some interior lighting, which you definitely won't be able to see because it's so bright out, but it does set red mood inside the car. Uh, I mentioned the power mirrors. It also has some advanced safety features for the time, and especially in a small compact car like this. It had side curtain airbags, oh, yeah. which was pretty new for a car, especially at this price point in 2009. It had a passenger airbag, but it also had a weight sensor inside the seat. So um, it would automatically turn the airbag on if someone over, I believe it's 60 pounds, is sitting in the front seat. Mm -hmm. If anything less than that is in the front seat, the front passenger airbag is not on. So it's indicated in this little dial here because yeah, I'm yeah. sitting in it, the passenger airbag is on. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's take it for a drive. Okay, going out on the road, something cool, you do have uh, a little red marker that shows you, you know, what gear you're going into. Yeah, it's got a couple of different gears for hill descent control. Uh, you can I go into I for intermediate descent. Intermediate. Or you can go into low, which actually turns the traffic traction control off, and it will only keep you in low gear up to 10 miles an hour. So that gear actually works pretty well in the snow. If you're trying to get out, you don't want to have traction control. You just kind of floor it, and it just kind of like digs itself. Up. It just spins the wheels. Yes, it's <laughs> Or, if you want to do uh, like really good like front wheel drive burnout, you just kind of put the parking brake on and then so put it's, it in low and uh, It's park. launch control. Oh yeah, it could be launch control. Except you can only go 10 miles an hour. Yes. Uh, something cool to also mention, we have your typical, you know, gauge cluster here. It is pretty cool though. Red lines at six and a half. Um, and you have a little screen here you can flip through various options in. Um, like tire pressure, miles per gallon, stuff yeah. like that. So uh, this car is equipped with cruise control that's uh -huh. on the steering wheel. It also has automatic headlights, which is a pretty cool feature. Nice. Um, so if you flip through the info screen, How do we you do have that? a couple of options. You just hit the info button on the steering wheel. Uh -huh. You'll see um, you get the temperature and your mileage. Yeah. And then after that, you have your miles. trip odometer. Mm -hmm. You'll also be able to calculate your fuel mileage and 204. fuel range. So I think I'm probably getting like 28 miles per gallon. 27.7. Like 27. So yeah, on average around the year, this car gets about 28 miles per gallon. Um, and when you have the air conditioning on, you usually lose about 3 miles per gallon. Listen to that cold air intake. 
So Alan's developed a technique to uh, modulate the throttle to make it sound like it's a manual car. Yes, comes from <laughs> driving this vehicle for almost five years. Mm. Probably more than almost six, six years I've had this car. Yeah, lots of highway mileage. Lots of highway mileage, yes. But yeah, basic maintenance and no issues. Yep, I change the oil every 3,000 miles. Uh, rotate the tires every six. Uh, I do basic maintenance, like, um, you know, make sure the tires are good. I change the tires before they get too low. I do the brakes pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is four-wheel disc, right? Or no, is it? No, drums is, in the back. This yeah. This is uh, two-wheel disc, and then it's got drums in the back. Mm. Um, I just had them done recently, so I shouldn't have to touch those again for a little while. But yeah, driving experience is good. You know, I mean, the engine doesn't really feel slow. It's not like it's a sluggish car. Transmission's fine. Um, shift's good. And it's just a nice car to drive in, really. Yeah. Seats are comfy. If you ever take it up on the highway, I mean, it's smooth. It'll cruise at 75 to 80 miles an hour, no problem. Mm -hmm. If the air conditioning's on, it doesn't really like to do 80. It'll <laughs> struggle a little bit, especially going up hills. It's an older car now. I, I've basically done modifying it. I've done everything I want to do to it. The only thing I want to do is just keep it running because it was given to me for free. And, uh, you know, that's cheaper than most people get their cars. So. Yeah. No, it's just been a great do, car. Do all the basic maintenance and, and just keep it running. And hopefully it breaks the Saturn's record of 298,000 Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So on that pace, it would take me about, on my current pace, it would take me about another five years to get there. The other thing I'm curious about is uh, I have a baby on the way, for those of you who don't know. Ah. Um, I will need to put a child seat in the back of this car which is kind of ironic because I also rode in the back seat yeah. of this car as a 13-year-old. Punch it. Ford! <laughs> it makes a cool noise, I have to say. It sounds good. It does. I, I good. like how it sounds. It sounds like an engine is just taking a deep breath and it revs out really smooth. Mm. This was like about a $20,000 car at the time, probably mm -hmm. something like that, maybe, maybe 25000 Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it rides really smooth and it's relatively quiet in here, especially, you know, it's got the sunroof. Yeah. And I'm, I'm impressed. And it's, it's held up to that ever since I've had it. Like, it's never been loud. Inside. Yeah. And it feels solid while you're driving it. I'm not like, it's not like shaking and banging. And, and you know, the steering has a nice feel. It all feels weighted and kind of, you know, well put together, especially for an economy car from 2009. That's pretty good. Yeah. And this actually has a pretty unique steering setup where Yes, it's power assisted, but it's not hydraulically assisted. Oh, okay. It doesn't have a pump, it doesn't have fluid. It actually has an electric motor that's attached to the steering column, actually right above your knees, Eric. Oh, and like right under here? Yeah, it's actually a variable assist, so it'll determine how much assist you need based on the resistance of the wheel. So you need more assistance if you're basically standing still, less assistance when you don't need it because you're rolling. Oh, well that's really cool. It's, uh, it's less taxing on the engine because you're not running a power steering pump. It's less taxing on the electrical system because you don't need to be running, you know, full voltage to the power assist motor all the time. It, it's overall less stressful on the entire car. I actually just installed Brembo rotors <gasps> because I had purchased rotors for about 20 bucks a piece on Rock Auto, and they lasted me about 10,000 miles before they were super warped. They made my steering wheel <laughs> shake, they made the car shake. I remember that, yeah. They were just awful. So I discarded those and I actually spent the money for some nice rotors and it stops really good now. Mm. So. so they actually made a Pontiac version of these, right? It was the... They did. There was a couple of different versions um, that used the same platform. So the Chevy HHR rides on the same platform. Really? The HHR? Yep. I didn't the know that. The Saturn Ion rides yeah, on the same yeah, platform. Yeah, the Ion. And then I believe it was the Pontiac G5. It looks practically identical. Yeah, it looks the same, except it has a Pontiac badge in the front and a Pontiac badge in the rear. The taillights are a little different. Yeah, taillights aren't circular. And it has a Pontiac badge on the steering wheel. Other than that, it's literally the same car. Yep. It is cool in this car. In your rear view, you do see the spoiler back there. Um, you could this, get this car two-door or four-door without the spoiler, and I always thought they looked so weird. Um, the spoiler really does add to the styling, even though I know it doesn't do anything, but it does add a sportiness to it, and you can see it behind you, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's one of those things where if they had never put the spoiler on it, I don't think it would have looked as weird without it. I think it just would have looked like a pretty normal car. Mm -hmm. But because they did put a spoiler on it, when you see them without it, it's just It looks like, so, like, ugh. wrong. It, this car in particular has been super reliable. I mean, I hope other people have gotten the same experience because I see them around all the time. The other thing about this car, I will say, is it's just dumb cheap. 
Uh -huh. I mean, every every part is super cheap. I mean, the car, like, if you look and find them online, they're all really cheap. Yeah. So if you're looking for cheap, reliable wheels, and, I mean, like, like I said, like, this platform they use for a bunch of cars, so there's parts everywhere out there for them. Um, you know, I can find parts for this super easy. Sway bar end links, I got them for like 17 bucks. They work great. <laughs> nice. I found front struts for like 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. Work great. I, I mean, like, everything in this car is, is super cheap and easy to find if you need to find it. Yeah. A couple more features on the Cobalt. You will see the key fob. This car has the very rare option of remote start. So I will hit the lock button. And then the start button, hold it down for about three seconds. Check that out. And I can get my car nice and warmed up for me in the winter time. And then if I want, I can shut it off just by hitting the remote start button. Remote shut off. I can also lock, unlock, open my trunk, and then beat the horn. Well, that wraps up our video on this Cobalt. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And thank you, Alan, for letting me drive your car. We have now completed... Yes, that completes all of our cars that the Grundlands own. Make sure to go and watch all of them if you haven't seen them. I think we own like, what, nine, ten? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> yes, uh, whenever we buy a new car. But anyway, thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you later. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another car rant. Now, if you've been keeping up with... No, we're not doing car rant. Car review. <laughs> Well, that's not good. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Pencils don't look very usable. Uh, they do need a good chunk, <laughs> I will say. Oh, we should have mentioned that it doesn't have power seats. Well, we'll talk about that when we're driving. I also want to mention the fact that it does not have power okay, seats, and I must manually board. go okay. back and forth. No. It's, oh, yeah, okay. I was, Oh, okay. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> oh, shut up. Um. Hmm. Yay! Hey. Without flaw. <laughs>